What's up everybody, I'm Mitch and welcome to, you guessed it, another episode of Fit for Moto in the Garage. Today we're talking about chain and sprockets, your drivetrain on your bike. A couple things to keep in mind when you're looking to replace the ones that you already have on there. What do I recommend as far as manufacturers go and how to install them? So with all that in mind, let's roll the intro and let's get this done. Best intro yet, I think. Best intro yet. I thought it was way more fun than I think the rest of this whole video was gonna be. That was awesome. So at some point in the life of your bike, you're gonna to have to replace your chain and sprockets. It's a really common thing and it's a really easy thing to get done. But first and foremost, let's talk about some sprockets because there are some options when it comes to replacing these things in terms of cost, longevity, how they're gonna wear, that type of thing. So talking about sprockets, you can either get steel ones or you can get some lightweight aluminum ones. Now, if weight is not an, an issue for you, if you're not racing, if you're just doing some trail riding or something like that and you're looking for something that's gonna last a little longer, I would recommend getting some steel sprockets for two reasons. One, they're gonna be a lot cheaper than these aluminum types. And two, they're gonna last you a heck of a lot longer. So if weight is not an issue, by all means, get a steel sprocket. The money's good. The, the longevity of them is really good, but they are pretty heavy. So going back to the other side of things, if you're looking at weight as an issue, I do recommend getting some aluminum sprockets like the one that I have here from Renthal. Now, these aren't cheap. I think this sprocket costs about $70 American or so. It's really lightweight. And plus, let's face it, it looks pretty cool. Now, I do find that these things will probably last you depending on how you ride, depending on how much maintenance you do on your chain, that type of thing. These are gonna last you a couple months probably. Um, so they're, the longevity of them isn't super long, but at the same time, they're lightweight and they do last pretty long. Again, if you keep the maintenance up on your bike, you should be just fine. So there's a couple options when we're talking about sprockets. Moving along to the chain, most bikes are just gonna come with a standard stock chain that's not an O-ring chain. And that's an issue because they wear out really quickly because they're just, they're just not made to last. They're meant to be something that they can just pump out and save some money on it more than likely. So when you're looking at an aftermarket chain, I recommend getting a heavy duty O-ring chain for something like a 450. If you're looking at something that has a little less power, like a 25, a 250, maybe it's an 80, something like that, you might not want to get the O-ring chain. Benefits of the O-ring chain, again, the longevity is gonna be there. This chain is, is gonna last you a lot longer than a regular chain, but along with the longevity comes the price tag. These chains are actually gonna cost you quite a bit more as well. So if you're looking at something that has less power, maybe don't get an O-ring chain. If power is not an issue and you have a 450 like this, definitely, if you can afford it, get the O-ring chain because it'll last you a heck of a lot longer. Manufacturer, I like to run Renthal sprockets. I've always had good luck with them. They seem to last a decent amount of time for, for going with the lighter weight sprocket. And as far as chain goes, I've been running primary drive now for a couple of years. They last a decent amount of time for the price that you're gonna pay for these things. Again, with something like a chain and the sprockets, you're typically gonna get what you pay for. So if you get a cheap sprocket, it's probably gonna be a heavier steel one. If you get a more expensive sprocket, it's probably gonna be a lighter weight aluminum one, and maybe it'll last a little bit longer if it's one of the really high-end ones. Tough to say, depends on how you ride, depends on your maintenance. When it comes to chains, again, there's a ton of different options for chains out there. You're gonna get what you pay for. If you get a, a crappy chain, it may break. Uh, it may not last nearly as long as one of the more expensive chains. So it depends on how you're riding. If you ride a ton like I do, it's worth the investment to get something a little more expensive. If you don't ride that much, by all means, go with a cheaper option. If you're gonna be way out in the trail somewhere, out in the back country, and you really don't want this thing to break on you, well then maybe you want to invest in a more expensive chain. But with all that being said, super easy to install these things. So let's get right into it. Let's slap this new stuff on and we'll see what we can do. Depending on which bike you have, you're gonna have either uh, a hex or an Allen wrench, um, bolt, something like that. So we've got all our bolts out. This thing is just gonna pop off here now, grabbing the new one. And you'll notice that one side actually has little divots that the bolt can fit into properly. And it's pretty obvious which ones those are. If you're putting it on and it all looks flat like this, that's probably not a good thing. Um, so just make sure that you've got it right side up and you can just start dropping these bolts back in. So we got this thing bolted back up. We got all the bolts in here. They've all been tightened up. They've all been torqued down. 
According to the owner's manual, the tire itself is done. This thing is ready to go back on the bike. But now we have the other part, which is doing the chain. Now the chain, it involves a little more because you have to measure out the links. You have to see how many links you need to take off of that chain to get it sized properly. When you buy a new chain, it will ask you what bike you have because it'll determine how many links that you need. But I'll show you here in a minute that you might have to actually take a link or two out of there to get some life out of that chain. So let's get started on that. All right, now one of the easiest ways to deal with your chain, put your rear tire back on because what it's gonna do is it's gonna hold that chain in place for us to get that master link out, but it's also gonna give us our new sprocket to actually measure the new chain on. And don't forget to so just open up your brake pads a little bit, save yourself some headaches so that your brake disc can actually fit in there again. I often will forget this. I'll go to put the tire on and I'll forget that I, to move the brake pads apart so the thing can slip on there easy, but it's not a big deal. And there we have it. You don't have to do up your tire just yet. We'll get to that. But you got new sprocket on and you got your old chain. Now you want to just keep going until you find that master link, which is going to look like that. Once you find that master link, push it off in the same direction of travel as the chain. So you're going to push it towards the front of the bike. And then once you have your master link undone, this link will pop out and you pull your old chain off. And there you go. You've got your old link and your chain is just going to simply pull off your bike. Now, what's the great thing about this, if, if you haven't let your stock chain get to the point where it, it's absolutely wore out yet, a great thing is to hang on to this, put the link back on it, and throw it in your little magic box. If you haven't seen that video, I do have a link here I can show you. Throw this chain back in your magic box, in your toolbox, whatever, throw it in the back of your truck. Keep it somewhere because if you need a new chain or if you need a spare chain, the other one breaks, this will get you back out on the track. You don't need to go through getting a new chain and all that. This will actually help you in a pinch. So hang on to that, keep that link in good shape. New chain time. So the first thing you wanna do, get your chain fed through, back around, and back on top of the sprocket here somewhere where the teeth are gonna have a chance to bite it. So you can see how long your chain is versus where your settings were, and see what kind of adjustments you need to make. So when it comes to your front sprocket, just feed it onto a couple of the teeth on the top, let it set on it, and you can just wheel it around, and it'll kind of feed itself through there. Once you have your chain set on, You'll see already here that I need to remove a link, but remember, I still have these adjusted to where the old chain was. So I need to loosen off my adjusters, move them in, push the tire forward so that I can get more length out of this chain. Now it's important when you're doing this though, is to make sure that all your notches are gonna line up on both sides, make sure that tire is nice and equal before you do any cutting of this chain or anything like that. Now I've already done that, and you can see here that when I pull some tension on the chain and set it down, that I do in fact have some, some extra links here. If I go to put this new master link in here, but I'm gonna to have to remove a link here. Now what that means, if I pop these links off, this chain's gonna set back here, and I can put the link through these two. Now that's fine, because now I have the adjustability built in, where I can back it off, tighten that chain up, and it should be good. So, you're just gonna fire up the old grinder. When I say old, I mean really old. Mine is an old grinder. And you could actually use filing just the same. Filing will work as well, but grinding is gonna get the job done a lot faster. So, when you're finished grinding it down, it should actually look something like that. It should look nice and smooth, because you're gonna use a punch, punch both of those pins down, so that this side here will just pop out, and you've got your link off. Now, punching these out, it's as simple as it sounds. You don't have to use a grinder. I have used a file to do this before. It is painstaking, it takes forever, it's a pain in the butt, but you can do it, so you don't have to have a grinder to do it. But it helps great if you have a vise to stick this in again, you don't have to. The main point is you just wanna be able to punch out these two things here, focus on it. Just punch those out so that link is off, and then your chain is ready to pop on. Now you'll know you're on the right track when you see these little circles start to come around and that's because the metal's starting to break away. So just keep punching these out, and this link should come out. Bob's your uncle. So just go ahead and throw that new master link through using just a little bit of grease on your O-rings. Put your new plate on there. Now when you're dealing with these master links, with the O-rings in there, it can actually be a bit of a pain in the butt because you have to compress these O-rings down in order to get 
that new master link on. So there's some tools that you can buy that make that really easy, but you can also just do it by using a pair of pliers or something to kind of temporarily squeeze that down while you get your new master link on. So once you've had a pair of pliers, or like I said, the tool that you can buy that makes it really easy, and you've got the O-rings compressed enough that you can actually fit your master link on, and you'll know that because there's little grooves in these pins and the link pins that the master link is actually gonna sit in. Again, open end towards the back of the bike. So you're gonna slide your master link on like that. And then using a pair of pliers, you can just squeeze it to the point where it snaps into place and your master link is on. And that's it. Once you've got your chain on, go ahead and put that tension on your chain as per your owner's manual. And you, my friend, have got a new chain and sprockets on your bike, which is gonna look wicked and it's gonna be safer because your chain is less likely to break at a pretty bad time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, smash that subscribe button for me. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next video.